There is a divine intelligence and principle, but it was never set up by one being or one man. It was set up by a great civilization of hundreds of millions of people. This thought was set up so dynamically that it saturated every atom of the entire universe as well as every atom of the human body, also with a directing influence upon all things. It was also set up with such power that it became a directing force of mind action where nothing changes. Thus it impressed its power upon every cell of the human form, and the light which denotes this divine intelligence was centered in the first cell to the extent that divinity has been passed on from generation to generation for billions of years, without a change in the real divine image of each unit of humanity. It will go on unchanged for a hundred billion years, as it is established as immutable law. And an established law in the cosmos is unchangeable. Law should be Lord, as there is but one law, one Lord for all established mind action. Man is the Lord in full control of divine law. Out of this great action came millions of years of peace and thorough contentment. Each one was the conquering Christ King of his own domain, yet a willing helper and worker with no thought of self or selfish ends in that which was the good for all, as an abundance of all things were there for all to use. Then groups claiming free will of thought and action began withdrawing unto themselves. They longed for a change. They wanted to know of material things and to think of themselves rather than for the entire group. Thus large numbers withdrew from the main household, as it was called at that time. Finally, the groups of dissenters combined and grew to the extent that their thoughts became chaotic until the natural elements were thrown into chaos and a great eruption took place within the sun, which lasted for at least a million years. At different intervals have come the planets and the stars of our solar universe. Yet prior to this chaotic condition, humanity had already set up indefinite mind action, such a divine balance that to chaos has come order, so divinely exact and perfect that the place any star or planet will occupy at any time can be mathematically determined to the second. This balance is so perfect that there has been no variation for a billion years. This certainly indicates inter eternity. Thus you can readily recognize perfect law or Lord in action. And it came into being through a great civilization of the human family and through their united will of perfect understanding through the civilization. To this divine understanding, understanding was given the word or name God. It was fully known that this word could be intoned at the greatest vibratory frequency, as it was placed at the head of all language. In the beginning, the word in no way represented a human form, but it did represent a great divine principle, set up by the entire human race. This race lived in heaven, as heaven to them was and is the ever-divine principle and harmony within the human form, which is the mind called God. From this word, knowing its divine origin and precepts, every divine condition does come to humanity. This divine, just, and perfect law, or Lord, reigns throughout the entire universe. You now see it throughout the entire solar system, but we know that it is just as positive throughout the entire human kingdom as well as the plant, mineral, and animal kingdom. During this chaotic disturbance, nearly all of those who had withdrawn from the great group were destroyed. Those who were left of this group were obliged to seek shelter in caves and wherever they could find protection. Food became scarce. And just the matter of food became so pressing that a large percentage became cannibals. 
These conditions which they brought upon themselves, and which not only separated them from the great group, but from each other, forced them to form tribes in order to exist, thereby causing them to forget all of their former knowledge, and so they became nomads. These were the forefathers of that race which is called material. And although this separation has carried on for well over a million years, there still remains something which may be called a half-instinct through which they feel they have been a part of the divine plan. Many of these are fearlessly coming forth today and freely proclaiming their lordship and a portion have advanced to the point where they are entirely free from all bondage. Those who did stand together in the great group went through all of these chaotic changes in perfect peace and composure without any loss of divinity, as they knew that divinity could never be lost or taken from them. For all this they are in no way claiming any selectivity, neither do they claim any power above that which all can use. During the period that this great civilization reigned upon this earth, the great land areas, as well as the seas, were peaceful. There were no land or sea disturbances. The breezes were gentle and invigorating, and all of the, all of the people traveled at will wherever they wished, as there was no weight of cumbrance, no limitation of time or space. They thought in terms of eternity. All thoughts and words were put forth as divine precepts and to such a definite purpose that they were firmly fixed and definitely recorded as precepts of divine mind, and these were the foundation and bulwark of a great reservoir that could be drawn upon for every supply, every action, and every undertaking. Thus man had at hand a universal supply for every undertaking and every accomplishment, for all humanity was looked upon as God-man and the Trinity or completion our focal point was God, the conquering Christ, God-man, the Trinity, complete in all. There was not a negative word in the language, neither was there a word for a past or a word for the future. All was here and now, and completely accomplished and finished. All of the accomplishments that humanity is struggling with today, in order to return to this high estate, have been accomplished by this so-called higher civilization, and all of the accomplishments are recorded in record form and are accessible to, hum to humanity as soon as they will look beyond this so-called material age with its welter of divided precepts and personal accomplishments. All of these accomplishments are perfected and fully recorded definitely in the great storehouse of universal mind substance. They can be called forth by mankind as soon as they still the clamor of those who through their own free will forged the calamity. The greatest hope is for the future generation. It is quite evident that the younger generation is physically, mentally, as well as mechanically the best of all timber. All that is lacking is courtesy and judgment tempered by experience. These qualities will bestow maturity. The greatest substitute and guide is habit, for a good habit is as easy to acquire and as difficult to break as a bad one. It is a well-organized thought by those who are the survivors of this great civilization that had every individual been carried out by these great chaotic disturbances, that the precepts were so definitely thought out and so thoroughly recorded in the universal mind substance that not one thing would have been lost. It is a well-known fact that every positive word set forth with a true meaning and a definite intent is so fully and intelligently recorded in divine mind substance, which we call God-mind, including every action and tone that it can be recalled. Also, photographic records made to the degree that all may see and hear all of these events.